Where's my notes? Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. So is this or is this not the youth group that raised $120,000? Yeah, that's something we're excited about, I think. All right, let me get to the verse. Chad got me this crazy Bible. It's hard to open. All right, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And we read, While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, can you say that word? Immediately. Immediately. Immediately, they left the nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, can we say that again? Immediately. Immediately. What is up with this thing? Okay. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. I want to preach you a message tonight titled no turning back can you repeat that no turning back no turning back uh, what am i preaching on no turning back. all right if you're going to beach camp you're going to keep going to church until then because there's no turning back no turning back all right let's pray father i thank you that you give me the opportunity to speak to these people tonight god God, I pray that you would humble me and move me out of the way so that your spirit can work, God. God, I pray for those who are lost in this place that salvation would reach them tonight. And God, I pray that you would just speak through me because I can't do this. I can't do this without you. God, we're expectant that you're going to move in this place. And in your son's name we pray. Amen. So, like we just said, I grew up a quote-unquote Christian, you know but I never had a sincere relationship with Jesus. You know, and then there was this one year in my life where things just weren't going so hot and I ran really far from God. You know, and then just when I was at my furthest, just when I was gonna turn away for good, I cried out to God and I told him I was done. I was done trying to do good works. I was try done trying to be in a relationship with him. But in that mo moment, something spoke to me and it said, go. You know, and it took me off guard, like I've already mentioned. And I was like, this, this, was it my mind? Was it God? I don't know. It's just so random. I don't think it's my mind, right? So what am I going to do? I don't, what does it mean to go? You know, I didn't know. But I did have some friends that were begging me to come to Wednesday night service here and hear Chad preach. Because supposedly he's like a really good pastor and I agree with it now. You know, so I came and, uh enjoyed it and then me and Chad became best friends and it seemed like God kind of synced us together and um, the more we hung out the more I pressed into the wisdom he would feed into me and like some of y'all might have experienced I began to have an intense fire for God you know nobody could knock me off my high and to be honest it was easy it was easy for the first few months you see, I didn't really seek God out though. I mean, I still, I had a genuine relationship with him, but I wasn't seeking him out because he seeked me out, you know? But this relationship couldn't be one-sided. You know, God doesn't want to be the only one to make a relationship work, you know? Just like a person shouldn't make a relationship work by themselves or a marriage work by themselves. So what happened was my high disappeared. I was still, you know, I was still like trying to find God, but my high disappeared and I was, I was confused. I was like, what am I doing wrong now? And um, you know, it was as if God was saying, come find me. And then uh, Chad confirmed this when we were uh, sitting out back behind a Dollar Tree. I was like pouring my heart out to him. I was like, dude, I don't know what's going on. There's like a cloud over my head. And he was like, you know, I think God's just trying to get you to seek him out. I think he's saying, come find me, seek me, and you'll find me. And so that's what I did. I truly sought God out with all that I had. And I was intentional about knowing my creator. And this is where the blessings came. This is where God confirmed to me that I am to be a pastor to his people. You know, this is where he affirmed to me the college I'm supposed to go to. And uh, boy, did he get it right, because I'm enjoying school so far. And I'm in Florida, and I'm tan, so that's nice. 
you know, but most importantly, I found a love for God that I never imagined possible. I found trust, security, and hope, and intimacy with my creator. And uh, I feel like he's saying to all of you, seek me out and see what happens. So I tell you all of this to say, God called me and my immediately may have not been immediate. You know, just as we said in the verse earlier, they immediately followed him. You know, it was kind of like that, but I didn't do it immediately. But when I did do it, it was immediate. You know, but you have to make the choice, choice where you don't settle for where you are right now. And you're going to immediately follow Jesus. So I decided there was no turning back. And the more I press in, the more I find God, and that's all I want. So what about you? You know, you might be a Christian. You might have never accepted Jesus into your heart. You know, but maybe you're in a place where God is calling you into deeper intimacy with him. You know, so my prayer and my hope is that is what happens tonight. God, I pray that y'all are saved and that you find intimacy with our creator. So I want to go into another verse, and I want to kind of base this no turning back concept off of this one verse in Exodus, because it kind of parallels what we got going on here, what I'm talking about. You know, so it's Exodus chapter 14, verse 10, and we read, When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. And the story perfectly illustrates what can happen when we trust God and his promises for us. But as soon as things don't make sense, we doubt. You know, we may even go to the extreme, and just like the Israels cried out, is it because there's no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in this wilderness? God, did you call me just to, to stay put right here, to be lost right here? You know, what have you done to bring us out of Egypt? Like, God, why would you call me and just leave me here? But I want to say to you, don't turn back. The God who made a promise to you shall surely deliver you. We see the Israelites didn't turn back. Even in the heat of it all, they pushed forward and they never saw the Egyptians again. And God delivered them to the promised land. You know, so we are going to push forward even when we don't understand. We're going to trust the promise of God that it will be fulfilled. So let us not turn back and trust the Lord will fight for us. All we have to do is trust him. So now if you're a believer in this place and you're saying, oh, it's too hard. There's too much stuff I got to do. I got to go to church. I got to read my Bible. You know, I got to pray to God all the time. You know, I'm a failure. I can't do all that stuff. And I want to tell you, it's not about that stuff. It's about relationship with Jesus. When you have relationship with Jesus, that stuff will follow. You know, Jesus is saying to you, if you just follow me, it's going to be all right. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together, but turn to me and trust me. And you'll be okay. I'm working this out for your good. Do you think the disciples had it all together? You know, in the first verse we had up there, it says they turned and immediately followed him. But does that mean they were perfect? Heck no. No, not even a little bit. They made so many mistakes, you know, especially Peter. You hear about Peter all the time. He's doing all this stupid stuff asking God all these questions. He denied him three times the week. He said he was gonna die and resurrect. He denied him three times. But he still followed Jesus and he did not turn back. You know, so so many of us don't know what we're doing or where to go. And Jesus is sitting there saying, child, if you will just follow me, there's no better way to follow than the way. I am the way, I am the life, I am the truth. I'll take care of you. I'll never fail you. Will you just follow me? I know you're tired. I know you're worn out. But just come to me and I will give you rest. Amen. So let's not turn back. Let's push in to the intimacy that God has for us and see 
where he'll take us. He wants to take us from glory to glory. And that takes obedience. And all God's asking us to do is follow him and he'll work out the rest. He'll put it all together in the end. So guys, that's my seven and a half quickie sermon. That's all I got for you tonight. But I wanna pray over you. And I believe the Holy Spirit is in this place no matter how, what I say, whatever words I say, the Holy Spirit is moving in this room. So after I pray, I'm gonna do a, a salvation call. I'm gonna uh, do an altar call. And if the band wants to come up, y'all can go ahead and come up. So let's pray. You know, Father, I thank you again that you've given me the opportunity to speak to a, such a great generation that I know you have huge plans for. God, I pray where words fail, your spirit would show up. God, I pray that your spirit would nudge at those who are lost. I pray your spirit would nudge at those who are seeking something greater than themselves, who are seeking a God of their salvation. God, I pray that you would deliver us from all these chains that are holding us back and that we would find our hope in you. So with 